Hey everybody, and uh, welcome to my next video. And what I wanted to talk a little bit about today was uh, this airbrush I have, the Sotar 2020. Um, a user asked me his thoughts on it, if uh, I thought it was a good uh, airbrush to use in regards to uh, painting our Gundam kits. And uh, I'll give you a little brief history here. I've been using this guy uh, up until now, the Neo uh, 4 Iwata uh, airbrush. And it's okay, I mean, it's a it's a cheap $40 airbrush, it's a, a dual action, and uh, it's gotten the job done so far. Uh, but I have some complaints about this airbrush. I don't really feel like it atomizes the paint very well, so um, a lot of times the projects don't end up looking as good as uh, I think they could. So. I found a, a steel on this Sotar. Um, I think when these guys first came out, they were in upwards of three or four hundred dollars. I still see some websites that sell these for a hundred and eighty to two hundred dollars, and I actually was able to purchase mine for about uh, eighty-five dollars, I think, on Amazon. Uh, so I uh, decided to snatch one up. Now this is the uh, Sotar twenty twenty. Uh, dash 2F model. The only difference between this and the regular Sotar is going to be the cup size, uh, as far as I can tell. Um, it has a little bit larger cup size, so you can get more painting in if you want, uh, in between Phillips. So, uh, this is the box that mine came in, and you get an extra needle, as well as a additional uh, tip for the end, and then they give you a, a small wrench to um, disassemble your tool if you need to. So, just kind of briefly going over what you get. Um, it's, uh, you know, your basic airbrush. Uh, one feature that I really like that this has over the um, Neo that I've been using is I can adjust how far back um, that this can go. So I can actually adjust the flow of paint. So, um, you know, you still obviously need to be careful uh, when releasing the air, but you don't have to worry so much about maybe sending out too much ink if you want to use it. I mean, you can certainly adjust that out so you don't end up doing anything, but uh, it serves a purpose. It's really good. So um, the question was, how does this uh, work with uh, painting Gundam kits? Well, uh, in my opinion, it works very well. It, it's certainly not perfect. It does have some drawbacks, and we'll get to that. But um, uh, I think one of the biggest issues, really, um, is going to be cup size. You know, this is the cheapy that I've been using, and as you can see, the cup size is enormous uh, compared to the cup size of this guy. So if you uh, absolutely detest you know, constantly filling your cup up, you can kind of see why this may not be the best choice for you. If that doesn't bother you, or, uh, bother you so much, uh, we can certainly proceed with um, thinking about purchasing it. So uh, let me show you a little bit about what this guy can do. All right, so I've got my uh, airbrush loaded up here with just a little bit of um, primer. And let's take a look and see what we can do. So I've got just one of my uh, paint mixing cups here. And I'm trying to get this thing adjusted to what should be about the finest spray that it can do. So let's take a look here and see what we can get. I need to open it up a little bit more. All right. So uh, there we can kind of see a little gray line. And one thing that this excels at, in my opinion, is in a lot of ways, this uh, kind of works almost like a pencil. You can get some uh, amazingly fine detail stuff that I never ever would have got with my old airbrush. I mean, there's no way I can get a line that small. So now how can you use um, that for, you know, Gundam painting? Well, um, I've got this piece here from a 1 to 100 scale kit. Um, I think also that this guy would work very, very, very well um, into um, 
uh, smaller size kits. But uh, there's a method of painting where um, a lot of people will paint um, something a base color and then go over it with uh, the lighter actual color that they want the kit to look. And you get a very nice effect that way, and, and that's mainly how I do a lot of my stuff. Uh, there's another method that you'll see a lot when people are painting uh, aircraft, let's say, and they've got these panel lines. And what they'll do is they'll put the coat of primer on, and then they'll go over with their uh, uh, black uh, paint and then fill in the panel lines. And then when they go to paint the kit, they just try not to cover that up all the way, and you also get a very cool shadow effect that way. So if I wanted to, let's say, treat this line right here as a panel line, I could certainly do that with this guy. All right. So we get a very fine effect. Now, let's see if we open this guy up again, what other kind of patterns we can get. Now this is probably opened up three quarters of the way now. So we should see a pretty uh, good size difference. So we see a much bigger line. Now, applying that with our Gundam part here, if I wanted to primer this piece, see that I get pretty good coverage. Now, if you look at my cup, I am about halfway through the paint that I put in there. That is really the only negative uh, part, I think, about this airbrush is the cup size. If there was a way to maybe modify this and make the cup a little bit bigger, which I'm sure there is, and if I felt creative enough, uh, I think one day I would try to attempt that. Um, opening this guy up full bore... Let's see what kind of line we'll get. Let's see. Okay. Alright. So again, very good coverage. It basically, it all comes down to uh, paint usage. Um, it doesn't bother me to have to fill my cup up. I mean, obviously, I would prefer not to, um, but I think with the amount of parts that your average Gundam kit has, you are gonna be filling this up. That being said, I, I think you can't really look at it like that. I was trying to think of a good analogy, and basically, like, what I could come up with was you, you wouldn't use your hobby knife to cut a dinner steak. It would just take too long. But on the same hand, you wouldn't take your steak knife and use it to trim off the parts on a model kit, would you? This is a very uh, fine detail, fine precision tool. This is uh, a tool that um, some of the really, really great airbrush, uh, airbrush effects artists use. So to judge it just because it has a small cup, I think isn't very fair. Um, I am primarily going to be using this, I think, uh, until I get, um, uh, I think maybe a, I might buy a Patriot. What I, what I feel like with this guy, I, I guess would be the best way to describe it is, I think I would like this guy very much if I just used him for painting um, everything after the base coat. So, uh, for instance, um, Having a large cup to be able to spray all my parts with primer uh, would be very appealing. Uh, if you've got many, many pieces that are all going to be the same base coat, it'd be nice to have an airbrush with a longer cup uh, that could hold more to be able to hit all those. But then after that, uh, the way uh, that this atomizes the paint, the way that this really um, makes it flow and the options it gives you, I think is perfect for pretty much everything else. Uh, that being said, I'm probably going to hang on to this guy and use him for um, those two tasks, putting on the base coat and putting on primer. Everything else I think I'm going to use this SOTAR with, and uh, I'm going to be very happy with it. So if anyone is thinking about using this guy, um, I totally recommend it, uh, especially, I mean, at the price I got, 
I can't beat it, you know? It's, um, it's going to get a lot of use, um, and uh, I'm, I'm happy for the purchase. So um, I hope, uh, to those of you that were wondering if this would be a good tool or not to use for your Gundam kits, uh, I hope that that kind of gives you some insight on what to expect, to see if you like it. Maybe, uh, maybe the idea of having to change out your, um, or uh, add paint to it a little bit more often isn't appealing. Um, me, not so much. I'm okay with that. Uh, I've got some other kits coming up that aren't going to be uh, Gundam. They're actually going to be some uh, a Star Trek kit, actually, in particular, um, which should be a lot of fun to work on, and uh, I definitely want to make sure that the paint job comes out really good, and this guy's going to get a lot of use on there. Anyways, um, that'll do it for this video. I hope you guys appreciated it, and uh, I'll see you next time.